Okay, we are on and we are recording. Hello. Um, I have a few minutes in the car. I know my last two, I think, were in the car, but I try to... I'm trying to be more consistent with doing vlogs, and so that's exactly what this is. Let me turn this AC down so it's not so loud. Um, I am thankful. I'm grateful. I, I want to share with you last year during the height of the pandemic, during the beginning of the whole quarantine thing, and how much quarantine was a blessing to me personally. In no way am I trying to regard it as being a blessing for everyone, but just kind of being forced to be secluded, be at home, really, really benefited me greatly. It it um, jump started growth. It jump started just creativity, and it allowed me to kind of be shielded away from a lot of distractions and. I, from the beginning, um, I remember being in third or fourth grade, and I believe I, am, I was in Mrs. Linda Schwald's class. I'm not sure if she'll ever see this, but shout out to Miss Schwald. I know I wasn't her favorite. I was not her favorite student, but she had us read a book entitled Zlata's Diary, and I believe it was a diary kind of like an Anne Frank diary I don't remember all the details but I believe that Zara or Zlata's diary was about a preteen or a teenage girl and the country that she was coming from was kind of similar to that of Anne Frank um, they were being bombed they were being attacked and so she kind of just would write about it in her journal and so in class I remember reading um, her journal and having it read to us by our teacher Miss Schwald and I remember it just inspiring me to to um, to journal to journaling and so that's what I did I started journaling in fourth grade and I talked about all types of things in fourth, and I continued journaling throughout throughout the years throughout high school my early journals they got lost during some moves or whatever um, but I during quarantine, I came across some journals from high school. I came across some journals from college. And I really felt the spirit tell me that you need to go in ahead and write those up and write a book. And so I was like, nah, I'm too embarrassed. That stuff was really crazy. Like, I don't want, nobody's going to read it. And the spirit told me, do it, do it, do it, do it. So I did. I spent, um, I believe, all of April, the yeah, the end of March, all of April, portions of May, writing, um, <clears throat> typing up my journal entries and kind of organizing them into a book. And I also wrote a couple chapters on top of it, reflecting back on that time. So I completed the book and I... Um, submitted to get it copyrighted and I got it ISBN and so it's kind of just been sitting around and I'm telling you this because I want to put it out there and not just sit on it and not just be fearful or it's all fear not wanting people to know that kind of intimate things about me number one number two um, it being perceived as being, oh, this is dumb, this is a waste of time, or this is trash. And so I came with, I was having a conversation with somebody, and they really inspired me to, to you know, to release it. It's almost done. I have the formatting to do, and I have um, the book cover, and that's it. I've done a majority of the formatting, but it needs to be reformatted to, to go on to Amazon. It's got to be under a certain format, and it's done. And so I want to make it a a goal of mine this month is April, the day after think the day after not Thanksgiving, the day after Easter, to put it out at the end of the month. I really want to make that happen. And so yesterday I was thinking about it, like, man, that book is going to be trash. Nobody's going to read it. Um, you know, it's a it's a big thick waste of time. That is what like the enemy was whispering in my ear. 
but as the enemy was whispering into my ear i heard the holy spirit the holy spirit said to me and it'd be funny he was like are there other books out there that are trash and i was like yeah i've read some trash books but one man's trash is another man's treasure so just because i read a book and i considered it trash doesn't mean that the next reader of the book would consider it trash so i might think of it as being trash but the holy spirit for him to continue to hound me about the book obviously he consider it considers it as treasure and even if it flops and nobody likes it and nobody reads it or if people read it and give it bad reviews at least i did it at least i put that trash out there and if one person and the whole world can read it and become inspired become encouraged become blessed become become inspired to get close to the lord give their heart to the lord pursue the gospel pursue relationship with god that's all that matters and so i just want to receive that promise i want to stand on that promise that if it's just if one person if just one person is touched by it i've we've won and so I'm looking forward to it. I wanna, I'm putting this on my YouTube channel because I wanna hold myself accountable. I wanna hold myself accountable to not walk in fear, not practice fear, not release it because of fear or be lazy and sitting around and not doing anything with it, just shelving it. So about two weeks ago, I printed it off at one of the staples or whatever. <clears throat> it's a really, really thick book, really thick book. And so I was looking at it, I was reading certain parts of it, I was like, dang, it's beautiful it's beautiful so um, I want to make you my accountability partner and I pray that in time I can come to you with an update and show you hey this is my book you know I really want to do that that is like that is like my ultimate goal for this year my ultimate ultimate goal this year is to release my book and to put it out on Amazon and um, just pray for me as I'm doing that um, that God will continue just to work on me, work with me, work through me so that others can read it and become blessed. Um, another thing that I've got going on is it's Monday. It's the day after Easter. And <clears throat> um, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. Um, I had gone through something several years ago and during that something I was going through my subconscious would would mutilate my body in my sleep if that sounds understandable so let me show you what it does it's gotten a whole lot better but you see these marks I have on my hands these marks I have marks on my hands you see them there they're here um, I there's scars on this hand and in my sleep I have them over here in my sleep I'll claw myself <clears throat> and that started at that time that issue I was going through um, it's gotten a whole lot better than what it used to be so now I just kind of focus on my hands and sometimes my feet but majority of the time it's my hands okay and so if you follow me and you see the marks on my hands it's my subconscious in my sleep I claw myself and you're probably asking yourself, well, why does that happen? I have no control over it. What I believe it is, is um, when I feel mad, at, when I'm angry with myself, if I do something goofy, I get angry, I'm really hard on myself, I get angry with myself. And while I'm sleeping, I think in my subconscious, my subconscious is angry at me too, so I just start scratching and itching. So I had did something last week that was really stupid. I um, I'm not gonna tell you what it was it probably is not that big of a deal but to me it was a big deal I beat myself up about it and so it manifested itself in my sleep and so um, that's where I got these new ones from and I'm telling you this because when I look at them it's a reminder of at times I'm gonna try not to get emotional at times I'm human, we're all human, and we make mistakes and we goof up. And it's easier, God forgives us a whole lot quickly, quicklier, if that's a word, than we forgive ourselves. And so since I find it so hard to forgive myself, when God has quickly forgiven me, I feel that it's not enough. And my subconscious, in a 
sick way it's I just I scratch myself to kind of punish myself for what I did and so when I become aware when I wake up and I see the marks I think of the enemy and I think to myself I use my hands a lot to communicate I express myself with my hands I work with my hands the most valuable part of my body outside of my heart is my hands and what the enemy does is he, he whispers lies into my subconscious while I'm sleeping what causes me to kind of mutilate my hands while I'm sleeping and I told the spirit I said Lord I don't care how much he whispers to me and reminds me of the goofy things that I do so that I have to sit there and look at these marks and these scars on my hands that I put there myself it doesn't matter if I end up having scars and marks all over my hands for the rest of my life I will always be thankful and I will always be grateful and no matter how many marks and stuff that are on my hands or marks that I might put on my body I'm never gonna stop telling people about the love of God I'm never gonna stop telling him how I got over and how I've been delivered and all the messages that I produce all the all the all the thoughts that I share it comes from a place it comes from a beautiful place so if the only thing the adversary can do to me is whisper stupidness in my sleep while I'm sleeping and give me these scars well knock yourself out because it doesn't even matter <laughs> it doesn't even matter so I don't know if that's something that you struggle with but I want to encourage you that don't let the enemy sit there and remind you of your foolishness. Don't let him remind you of that because it doesn't matter. What matters is that we continue to press forward and I continue to remind myself, hey, God has forgiven me. I can forgive myself as well. Anyways, I'm a, that's enough on that tangent. <laughs> um, that's all I wanted to share. I'm outside of an appointment right now, but I am Nikki the Great. And together we are growing, sharing, and thriving.